Hi guys, welcome back to the session. Today we will learn REST Web Services command in Automation Anywhere A2019. So the agenda for today's session will be overview on application programming interface that is API, overview on web services, introduction to REST Web Service package in Automation Anywhere and demo on REST Web Service package. So let's get started by looking into the application programming interface. So API is a set of rules or protocols to communicate between two applications. So let's try to understand this with the help of an example. Let's say that there is a person John who is in a restaurant to have some food and the food is being prepared in the kitchen. And of course John doesn't have direct access to the kitchen. So to access that kitchen there is a person in between that is waiter. So waiter is there to take the food request from John to kitchen and once the food is prepared in the kitchen then the waiter is going to take the food response from kitchen to John. Now the API works in an exactly similar way. So the APIs are used for communication between two applications with certain set of rules. Let's say that there is an application one called client and application two called server. Now this client and server want to communicate between each other. So how they can communicate between each other? They can communicate with the help of API. So the APIs are going to take request from client to server and once the request is processed in the server then the API is going to take the response from server to the client. Now we will take a real time example to understand this API in a better manner. So this is the make my trip website used for flight and hotel bookings. So when we provide the from and to locations and provide a depart date over here and click on search. So you see we got the flight details from several airlines such as Air Asia and Go Air. So how do you think that Make My Trip website got the flight details from these airlines? Well definitely these airlines won't have exposed their server details to the third party website Make My Trip for the security reasons. So what these airlines do, these airlines exposes some APIs and Make My Trip uses those APIs to get the real time flight data. So here the APIs are used for the communication between this Make My Trip website and several airlines. And now that we are familiar with the APIs, let's try to understand the web service. So there are several types of APIs in the market and this web service is one of the types of API which supports HTTP protocol. And the types of web service, let's now look into the type of web service. So we have two types of web service. First one is RESTful web service, which uses REST as the architecture style. REST stands for representational state transfer. And the second type of web service is SOAP that stands for simple object access protocol. So now that we are familiar with APIs and the web service, let's look into the REST web services package of Automation Anywhere. So this REST web service package is used to work with RESTful web services using the HTTP methods such as get, post, put, delete and patch. So let's quickly jump into the Automation Anywhere and create a project using REST web services. So this is a website REQRES which provides several sample REST APIs. If you scroll a bit down, here we have a list of APIs, REST APIs with different methods such as get, post, put, etc. So we are going to use this API with the get method. This get method is used to get the data from the server. For that we have this request path and this is the response data. This response data is in JSON format. So let me show you this one in another tab. Let's take this server name. Let's take this server and let's take the path from here. So when this URL hits the server, we get this response from the server. And this response is in JSON format. So now let's see how we can get this response using Automation Anywhere. So for that I will move to Automation Anywhere. We'll quickly create a new bot. So for that let's move to bots, my bots. And let's click on create new bot. Let's give a name over here. Demo underscore rest API. And let's click on create an edit. So here we are in the edit task bot page under actions. Let's search for the rest web service package. 
So this is the REST web service package which provides action to perform web service operations which we discussed few minutes back. Here we have different actions over here. So we are going to use the get method first as we have taken the API with the get method from this website. So let's select this get method from here. Let's drag and drop it over here. And let's move to list view of the task and here it says the description of the get method as the get method gets the information that is identified by the request URI. So let's see what all details we need to provide over here. So first of all we need to provide the URI. So this will be our URI. Let's copy it from here and let's paste it over here. And after this, we need to select the authentication mode. Since in this URI, there is no authentication present. So we will go with the no authentication. But in case your URI contains the authentication, so what you will do, you will select this drop down and select the proper authentication from here. Let's say that your URI contains the basic authentication. So you will click on this basic and provide the username and password over here. And make sure that you are providing the username and password in the form of credentials which we discussed in the previous session. It's a good practice to provide the sensitive data of the project in the form of credentials rather than providing hard coded value or a variable. So now I will switch the authentication mode to no authentication and next we need to provide the headers. So for some web services, headers are also required such as authorization header, content type header, etc. So in case your web service also requires header, what you will do, you will click on this plus and provide the name and value over here. Now this web service doesn't require any header, so I'm going to uncheck this one. And next option we have is to assign the output to a variable. Now when this web service will hit the server, we will get a response like this, which need to be stored inside a variable. So we need to create a variable over here as well. And here it says need a variable of type dictionary. So this dictionary variable takes the value as key value pair, which we have learnt in detail in the email automation session. So in case if you have missed that one, please refer to that video to know about the dictionary variable in detail. This is a new variable type which has been introduced in A2019. So I'm going to create a dictionary variable from here. Let's click on create variable and let's provide the name over here. Response data and this will be a variable of type dictionary and let's click on create and select. So we have provided all the details required in this get method. Let's click on apply. Now I'm going to add a message box to display the response. So I'm going to add a message box over here. Let's drag and drop it over here and in the enter message to display, I'm going to press F2. Let's select this drop down and let's select this response data variable of type dictionary, which we have just created. And since it is a dictionary variable, so we need to provide a dictionary key as well. Now to work on this REST web service package, Automation Anywhere has provided two dictionary keys. First one is header to get the response header and second one is body to get the response body. Now in our case, this API doesn't have any response header. It is only the response body. This is set to be the response body. So I'm going to take the dictionary key as body and let's click on yes insert. And we have provided the message which we wish to display. Let's click on apply. Let's save this pod and we'll quickly run this one to see how it works. And let's click on run. And my bot is running now. And here you see we get the message from the bot as the response data. So you see this message is similar to the response data which we received over here which is also present over here so as of now what we did we fetched the entire response from the server now after this step let's say that i want to get this specific id or this specific email so how to do that so for that we are going to use string operations which we will see in the next session so let's close this one and let's close this as well. 
So our bot ran successfully. We got the response data from the server. And in the next session, we are going to see how we can extract this specific ID or this specific email from the response which we received. Also, we looked into this get method in the today's demo. So in the next session, we are going to take some other methods as well. And that's all for this session, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a like and share with your friends and hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos. And I will see you soon in the next one. Bye bye.